Kind of just looking at where the Falcons are right now in comparison to kind of what they've had the last couple of years, let's just talk salary cap. I mean, what do you see when you're looking at the opportunity that the Falcons have going into this offseason? It's a chance to build. I think that over the last two years, you're just trying to get out from under the financial boulder that the last regime created for you. And you understand how you get there, right? You have Matt Ryan, you have Julio Jones, you have ownership that's willing to spend to the cap every single year. I mean, Thomas Dimitrov did what he did to squeeze everything you could out of those rosters, but eventually the bill comes due. And Terry Fontenot had to clean up that over the last couple years. And now you get a chance to build the team that you envision. They've been able to do it slowly through the draft and the patience that they've shown there. But now, if you want to go out and get a top of market free agent at safety, at corner, at some of those positions of need, that's on the table now. I'm interested to see what happens with you know key free agent. I think Caleb McGarry is a big conversation for them. Because if you keep McGarry in the building, offensively you feel really good about what you got. The question mark is quarterback, how much you want to trust Desmond Ritter, what sort of leash you want to give him relative to the quarterbacks you might be able to get early. I like Ritter. I've liked Ritter for a long time. I think what you saw over the, that last quarter of the season makes you feel like he's getting it. He's coming up to NFL speed. You can see it starting to click. And I would imagine they feel good about trying to see what that looks like in the, in the first half of next year. And so if you can close the book on offense and say, we like Arthur Smith, we like some of our talent, we'll fill in some gaps here and there, you can turn to that defense where there were some issues last season. And you obviously have a big change in defensive coordinator. You're going from Dean Pease and it's an odd front and it's blitzing and it's crazy to Ryan Nielsen, who I don't know if you saw those Saints defensive ends. They're a little bit bigger than the guys at Atlanta have. It's oh, yeah. Slightly different approach to playing defense. I think you'll start to see a lot of resources get poured in there. And it's a pretty good defensive draft. It's a bit of a quiet free agency class overall, but there's good defensive options. I think you've got the chance to see a big turnover on that side of the ball and try to get that up to the speed of the offense. I'm expecting all of us to enjoy watching what Terry Fontenot and the front office are going to do mm -hmm. because all the things you just lined up, perfect, right? Then you take into account the division right now. Tampa Bay won the division, but they don't scare anyone. And when you have a division that's as wide open as you have right now, plus it certainly looks like you found your quarterback. And, and you know, a lot of times we analyze divisions by quarterbacks. In the NFC South right now, the ranking quarterback is one Desmond Ritter. Which is just wild to me. It is absolutely it's wild for all of us yeah. because just a couple seasons ago, we were talking about Cam Newton was at Carolina, yeah. Tom Brady was in Tampa Bay. So this is what we're looking at right now. Desmond Ritter looks to be the guy. That's who they'll build around. I like how they, they've played under Arthur Smith because they look like a 3-4 win team, yet yeah, every game they're in, they're battling, they're still there. And down the stretch, there was still an opportunity. Didn't quite get there, but I certainly love what they're doing. I really like the fact that Ritter already has a number one receiver in London. Mm -hmm. And now you've got to find yourself a runner, pretty, a pretty good runner last year, Tyler Algier. Yeah, I mean, I think what's really interesting is they've got a good group of young core players now. And, you know, you look at the Chris Lidstroms and the Kyle Pitts and Drake Londons and the A.J. Terrells, um, Richard Grant, like they, I feel like they feel like now they've got a good core of players where now they can sort of go into go into the draft, go into free agency with their options open, just looking to add more good players. There's a few things I think you could, you know, certainly look at. You know, the defensive side of the ball, pass rusher, certainly one area you look at where the Falcons can improve. The quarterback situation, I think, is maybe still on the radar, right? I mean, where you guys are picking, this group looks pretty damn good as far as that position is concerned. I know Desmond Ritter did some good things too, but I would think, you know, some evaluations are going to be done there in that department as far as what they want to do, rookie, maybe a veteran, somebody. They're going to add somebody to the mix, right? Um, so I think those are two that probably, you know, jump off the top of my head. Tell Falcons fans what they can expect around that number eight overall pick. There's definitely some intriguing talents, pass rushers, cornerbacks. Falcons need a lot of help, especially on defense. What can they expect within that draft cluster around that number eight spot? The quarterbacks always drive a draft, good, bad, or indifferent. This year is not superstar power like we've had in the past, but plenty of really, really good ones. Does Bryce Young come off the board first, right? Does C.J. Stroud come off the board first? How deep do we go with Will Levis, right, right with Kentucky? So once all that kind of gets taken care of and, does, and do people come up to get the guy that they absolutely want, that could drive things for Atlanta as well because then if it's more quarterbacks and defenders, does Jalen Carter go from maybe being the top player in the draft to sliding to a point where Atlanta may have a shot? Does Will Anderson from Alabama, who may be the top player in the draft, does he slide, quote unquote, to where Atlanta has an opportunity? Those sort of questions will play themselves out, but the quarterbacks will drive it. No ifs, ands, and buts. I think you're going to see 
the peak of the cornerback class, which is really strong this year, be right there at that eight pick. And that's where I'm really interested in with the Falcons right now because A.J. Terrell is so good. But you don't want to be in a position where teams can go, okay, we don't want to throw at that guy. We're going to throw at the guy over there. Yeah, we're going to throw the guy over there. Right, and when you saw the, the Saints defense be successful over the last few years, like Marshawn Lattimore, incredible, obviously, but they had a Pulse and a Debo that they could cycle in who was good for them on the outside, a Ken Crawley who was good for them. Uh, they had Alante Taylor, right? They did a great job of filling that corner two spot and lets you play man coverage, which is the golden goose in the NFL. If you play man coverage, you're good. Um, so I think you're going to see that, that top of the corner position, Joey Porter Jr., Penn State, Devon Witherspoon, Illinois, Christian Gonzalez, Oregon. You'll see those guys available. You're going to see... The second tier of edge rushers, we talked a lot about getting those big defensive ends. Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa is a guy who's got that size. You're going to start to see those guys come into play. Other than that, yeah, you're going to get like the edge of the quarterback class as well. And you have to have an honest conversation about that. How much do you like some of these guys who can develop, who's a project, who do you want to get into the building? Um, but that, the corner position specifically, Atlanta's really well suited for that right now. So that's where my mind goes first. If you love one of the quarterbacks and he's there, or if draft night happens and we're at five and Seattle's on the clock, and they don't want one of them, and the guy that you have fallen in love with in the process is available for the right price, I'm totally fine pulling the trigger on that guy because they've done such a great job over the last two years building up the infrastructure on offense around the quarterback. They had this chance in Terry's first draft. They had the fourth overall pick. There were quarterbacks available. They chose not to draft Justin Fields because I think in their minds, you don't want to put a quarterback in, bad, in a bad situation. You don't want to put them in bad circumstances. Well, when you have two pass catchers that you've drafted in the top 10, when you have a left tackle, when you have an all-pro guard, and you've gotten so much out of the offensive linemen that even people had questions about, it's a hospitable place for a quarterback. They're ready if they're ready to pull the trigger now. I think quarterbacks near the top of the priority list. Now, does that mean they're going to take a massive swing? Maybe not, but I think they're going to do multiple things at the position. Um, you know, and then outside of that, again, like I think that they're just sort of in this position where they can, they can sort of add where they need to add because they've got good pieces in a bunch of different position groups to build around without, I think, a crying need anywhere. And so if you look at like where they're picking, for example, they're picking eighth, I think, right? So they're picking eighth overall. Well, you know, if you look at the makeup of the draft class, that puts them right in front of the cliff where there's really supposed to be a drop off around the 11th or 12th pick. And the players who are above that cliff are more or less defensive pressure players. So. Like, could you be looking at like the Iowa pass rusher? Could you be looking at one of the Clemson kids, whether it's Brzee or um, or Murphy? Um, you're probably not gonna get Jalen Carter or Will Anderson, right. but like you've got a chance to get a really good defensive player up there. So I think that's gonna sort of that sort of illustrates the way I think they're gonna approach this. Where it's they don't I I think they go both into free agency and the draft without a feeling that they need to press a certain need, and that allows them to just go get good players.